Good morning to Laura. This is James L.R. Nichols broadcasting live from inside Mount Carcera. We hope you're all having a wonderful day right now. We have the special privilege of being here with Adam Hattaney. He is a senior designer, and uh, him and his team put together all the awesomeness you're about to look along with the massive efforts of all the programmers and artists and other designers we have on the team here. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it to him. But all of you get to look forward to Infernal Dawn coming to you live tomorrow, Wednesday, April 18th. So look forward to it and enjoy the show. All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, I am Adam Hattaney. Some of you might know me from raid testing or I post as decoy Tryon on the boards. And we are here to talk about Infernal Dawn today. So here we see uh, we're in the, in the middle of Mount Carcera. We've come through the, uh, the Searing Brink to enter the zone. And we're going through the uh, first boss here. This is War Boss Drac. He is the leader of the Wanton Armies. And he has assembled his forces here, as you can see, ready to stream out of Mount Carcera and, and assault Ember Isle. Uh, now, unlike some other army commanders, a war boss drag is not primarily concerned with victory. Uh, I mean, it would be nice if they won, but really they just want to create chaos and carnage. Uh, they want to throw their, their soldiers into the, into the, the meat grinder, essentially, because uh, they want to they wanna make Maleforge angry enough to bust out of his prison. So I don't know if you've played any of the Ember Isle Zone events, but uh, like Scarion screams about, you know, making Maleforge angry enough to, to come forth and all that. So that's essentially what Warboss Dirac is trying to do as well. They're trying to stoke Maleforge's rage such that he'll blast out of the volcano and, uh, you know, burn Talara to a cinder. So, what? Some, uh, I see some of you are saying that you have a black screen right now. Oh, cool. Um, so uh, hold on a second. I'm checking it out myself. So you can see that the lighting here is a little on the macabre side. Uh, that was a really specific uh, art decision. You know, we really want to make people have to have to use the, the torches. You know, we added a new feature uh, using torches to be able to see. You're going to need to equip a torch, uh, kind of like the flashlight in uh, in Doom Three. Doom Three? Yeah, yeah, Doom Three. You're going to have to equip a torch like a flashlight in order to see anything. Um, you know, it's a it's a pretty interesting mechanical decision, I think. But we still. I think we're good. Yeah. I, I, oh, people, people can see? Saying, some people are saying they can see it. Um, if you're having issues... Hi, this is Elrar again. And uh, apologies for any difficulties, but this is our first live stream, so bear with us. Uh, we're always, you know, trying to make things work as best as they can. But if you happen to have a black screen while you're watching on Facebook, you should be able to hover over the screen and just click on our live stream page directly in the top left corner. Try that and it should work for you. Yeah, working, good. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, like I said, Warboss Drac uh, wants to throw all of his his men's into the meat grinder to make Maleforge super pissed, so that he'll come out of the volcano and uh, set Talara up to flame. So we are going to head down the Earthwing. Uh, as you may know, uh, the, the Infernal Dawn raid has uh, two wings, two primary wings, a Fire Wing and an Earthwing. And once you defeat those, you'll get access to Lathus and Maleforge, who are in the center wing, I guess, like the dragon wing. So we're coming down here through the uh, crystalline passages towards Maclemos the Scryer. You can see Maclemos here. Maclemos is a cyclops and uh, one of the, uh, the, the powerful members of the Golden Maw. Um, and unlike uh, many other scryers, he actually can see the future. Uh, you know, he's able to, to pick out all the potential possibilities uh, and he's able to see a potential path to all of the world's, all of Talara's oceans uh, turning to lava. Uh, and they know that if Maleforge busts forth and, and, and is angry enough that he is able to do that. And so based on that eventuality, uh, they've formulated a plan to take advantage of it, which you'll see in the next chamber. Looks pretty awesome though, right guys? Yeah. Thumbs up for our team. Hell yeah, Geodes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So here we're we're heading towards the uh, the super awesome pirate ship. It's an official name. There we go. So this is the Dread Fortune. 
The dread fortune has been constructed specifically so that it can sail on lava. Um, what that means is after the, after the lava, or after the ocean, sorry, are turned to lava, all other ships will burn, but this one, this is the only ship that will not. Um, so they'll have ultimate military superiority on the high seas, uh, and more importantly, they'll be able to assault all of the uh, Talaran settlements from the ocean when, without any sort of uh, uh, defense really possible against them. So players are going to have to stop that from happening. Am I right? That's no good. It'd be super bad. Here we're on the deck of the Dread Fortune. You can see our, our captain here, Ruzula Dreadblade. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. <laughs> Ruzula is awesome. You can see she's deadly and beautiful. And uh, when you hear her voiceover, uh, she has this like dark Jamaican accent. She is super awesome. Actually, you know, I don't know if that's going to translate into other languages, but hopefully, hopefully they'll get it. Get it going in German and French or whatever. <laughs> a little Jamaican styley. You can see she's clapping for you. She's like, oh, it's so adorable. You're going to attack my pirate ship. Oh, no, my bros are going to shoot you in the head. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So you can see, uh, you know, really the first part of this fight is you're fighting the ship, essentially. You know, it's like all the ship's defenses. You can see that's how she commands her ship with this, uh, like this sort of projected hologram dealie. Um, you know, so until you can defeat the ship, until you can destroy the heart of the ship, you won't actually be able to engage Ruzla. Uh, but once you do, she is no pushover. She's got a lot of cool stuff, and she's super hot, and the ship is awesome. So we're going to roll up here, look at, take a look, little look at the cannons, and then head back to the entrance. We can go look at the fire wing. Yeah, they are snipers, actually. You have to dodge the headshot. That's no good because it kills you. Quan, you are absolutely correct, um, except that we're changing it to a, a 10 buff purge. We really prefer nobody to have buffs in PvP ever, so Eradicate is going to dispel 10 buffs. That's right, 10 buffs. Not really. I'm not a class designer. All right, so here we are in the fire wing. <laughs> um, <He's, laughs> this is Elrar. This is he is totally kidding. He is not a class designer. So <laughs> that's why at the beginning we asked that uh, if you uh, can keep your questions limited to only Infernal Dawn, we promise we won't troll you, or at least as little as possible. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, he's lying. We are going to debuff 10 buffs on Eradicate. <laughs> Not really. All right, sorry guys. Uh, we're in the fire wing of Infernal Dawn. Um, this is where the uh, uh, the wanton armies uh, have set up shop. Essentially, we see Muglack here. He's one of our mini bosses. Um, he drops some special crafting stuff, uh, so people will be able to do some some really awesome crafting recipes using drops in the zone. Uh, here is Atuziel. Atuziel is the Herald of Flame. Uh, he's been summoned as a bodyguard by the Ember Conclave, which are the three generals of the of the wanton armies. Uh, he's essentially there to stop Ascended from interrupting their war council. So if you do manage to get past Atuziel, uh, who, if you walk around to the backside of him, has definitely been getting strong. He's been doing his squats, his weighted lunges. He's got a well-sculpted posterior. Uh, <laughs> if you can get past him, uh, you're going you're gonna to get a chance to engage with the Ember Conclave. The Ember Conclave are the three generals, like I said. Emberlord Iritu leads the Devil Armies, and he's the head of the council. Uh, and then he also has Packmaster Nahoth, the leader of the Kobold Armies, and Witch Lord Zath, who is the leader of the Goblins. Uh, and the three of them are up here formulating their battle plans. Uh, they want to make sure that, that they attack Talara with the, with the greatest amount of force and terror as soon as Maleforge bursts forth from his mountain. You see these guys chilling, having a little convo. Drinking some brewskis, doing some high fives. Oh, is it quiet? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, my bad. Like I said, drinking some brewskis, making some, doing some high fives, having a good time. All right, so when you defeat them and when you destroy the pirate ship and defeat a Ruzula Dreadblade, you will get a chance to attack Lathus and Maleforge. So here we are in the Hall of Avarice. We're approaching the Golden Horde. This is uh, Lathus' treasure chamber. This is where she keeps all of her, her pretty stuff. All of her gold and jewels. You can see, oh, where is she? It's like, it's like she's not even in here. Or, or is she? Yeah.
yeah, she totally is. Oh, God, she's going to kill you. Goodness. Brah! Yep, super cool. Yeah, hats off to our animators for that and the artist. You can see that she's just absolutely stunning. Um, one of the aw most awesome looking raid bosses in any game, if you ask me. Um, you're hurting yourself, bro, Seth. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, as you can see, when you damage her enough, she's going to submerge. You think you've won, but you haven't. It's Lathus 2. More powerful than you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, totally Raptor Jesus. Yeah. So that's real Lathus. And real Lathus don't play. She has a lot of cool stuff. Can't wait for people to uh, engage with her for realsies. If you can not be distracted by her incredible beauty, that is. Not mean. All right, so when you defeat Lathis, <laughs> well, she had to make herself up out of the gold, man. There's not necessarily enough gold there to make two arms. Come on, give her a break. <laughs> you just banned somebody? <laughs> nice, somebody got banned. Uh, all right, so we're coming towards uh, Mail Forge now. You can see it's really fiery, uh, much more dangerous, a lot of lava stuff in this chamber. It reflects how uh, how scary and fiery Mail Forge is. You come out on this platform, and you're going to see the beginning of Mail Forge Part 1. You can see up there on the upper right, kind of, you can see the eggs, which is your ultimate goal of this encounter. Oh, God, who's that coming out of the cave? Maybe you pissed him off enough. He doesn't want to stay in his mountain anymore. Yeah, Big Daddy Mail Forge. He wants some. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, our illustrious driver was supposed to die, but he didn't. <laughs> he's, uh, he's just far too powerful. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead uh, back to the front of the zone here. Um, and uh, we can talk. We can do some questions, whatever you guys want, I suppose. we got a little time here. What's that? Uh, yeah, that's correct, Drac. Uh, you can only access Mail Forge once you kill Lathis. It's essentially like a linear wing. So once you once you access the Lathis wing, you you clear the Lathis, kill Lathis, and then clear Mail Forge, and then you have Mail Forge. And when you defeat Mail Forge Part One, then you'll get to do Mail Forge Part Two, which we are not going to show you at this moment. But I'm sure there'll be some videos up once people get there. Um, Ivira, Ivira, Ivira from Wolfsbane says, uh, which, wing are, which wing are we opening first? Um, this time we are going to start with the fire wing. So tomorrow morning or whenever the servers come up, um, you'll be able to walk in here. And if you defeat Warboss Drac, you will be able to do the, the two mini bosses that come in from the earth and fire wing. But the earth wing will be locked. Uh, and then you'll also have access to the fire mini boss Muglak, Ituziel, and the Ember Conclave. Uh, the next unlock will uh, uh, unlock the Earth Wing. So after that, you'll have access to all the Fire Wing, as well as Maclemos and Ruzula Dreadblade. Uh, the next unlock after that will be Lathis only, and then the last unlock will be both Mail Forges. Uh, the actual dates for that are roughly defined internally. Um, I expect that we'll probably open the Earth Wing after a week, and we'll probably open Lathis one week after that. Um, but whether Mail Forge opens one week after Lathis remains to be seen. We're still deliberating, I guess you could say. Um, there's really not that much trash in comparison. Sorry, not trash. We don't call it trash. These are uh, uh, non-boss encounters. They're very stimulating, just like a boss fight. And they can drop loot just like a boss fight. So really, people should appreciate them just the same amount as a boss, if you ask me. Um, oh, maybe they're referring to trash in this fight specifically. Well, this fight is a very much of a, it's sort of a, uh, did somebody say something about microphone? Ah, whatever. It's scrolling too fast. Um, there is a, uh, uh, it looks like a lot of trash here, a lot of non-boss encounters, but it's really for atmosphere. So this is a, a sort of a gauntlet type encounter. You have different kinds of mobs. They're coming at you in waves. You have sub-bosses before you get to engage with uh, Warboss Drac. But these guys around the edge, uh, some of them will come attack you, but many of them um, are there. Uh, to, to sort of define the fight space because if you walk up to them, they will chop you to death. They won't actually pursue, uh, but they are in combat and they're, they want to kill anyone who walks into their melee range. So, uh, you know, I'd recommend not doing that. Although it's pretty funny, gotta say. 
All right, what time is the patch? I don't know, Intrinsic. I am not a server engineer. Uh, you will see, you know, the server message will go out. Oh, the server's coming down. It'll be up in approximately whatever. And it'll probably be up in the approximately whatever. But, you know, no plan really survives contact with the enemy, right? Not that you guys are the enemy, but you know what I mean. Things change. I just uh, I saw a bunch of you European players asking. Uh, it'll come out again, you know, the same time period after the North American release. So same day in North America, but it'll be early morning Thursday probably for for most of you in Europe. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, we need Elrar to do his mead. His mead yell. Can you do a mead? Mead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god, I can hear that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, ow. Yeah. Sorry guys, that's my bad. I shouldn't have let him do that. <laughs> you mead bro? I am mead bro. I am mead bro. Um neural fiend. Yeah, there's there's basically uh there's new there's new crafted recipes that need drops off of the mini bosses. I believe the drops off the mini bosses can all can also drop off of uh um the trash mobs as well. Um and uh, they'll be used in the recipes to make the new beta weapons. I know there's weapons. I don't know. Maybe there's armor. Um, I'm not certain. But I know there's weapons. So uh, Resists. Uh, you will need fire resist for some fire bosses. And you will need earth resist for some earth bosses. Um, does ID require resist hit and flame focus requirements? Yeah, okay. Um, Ariston. Basically... This zone is the next tier of rating, right? So it's a next tier up from HK, the same way that HK is a tier up from GSB and ROS. Uh, so you're going to need like 400-ish hit or like 420, whatever whatever the actual get no misses ever value is. You're going to need, you know, a, a tier above HK. You're going to need HK gear probably to have any success in this zone. Um, although the first boss is meant to be a little bit more accessible. So you might be able to take down Drac with uh, um, maybe less than hk best in slot on your raid maybe yeah probably a bit less but we'll see um you know as usual adjustments to the encounters uh will be made post launch depending on you know any bugs that might be found i don't think there's any but you never know you know there's always going to be something that that we missed because we are imperfect so there's also a lot more of them than there are of us yeah uh, yeah, there's a lot more of them than us for sure. Um, so uh, let's see, ID same system as HK increase. Okay, so they're talking about hexed pieces. Um, there are hexed pieces, or you know, hexed type pieces that will upgrade some of your gear, um, the gear that you buy with marks from from purple to orange, from uh, epic to relic. Uh, however, they don't cover the full suit. So. Um, as a for instance, to upgrade your shoulders to Relic, you need to do the hard mode of the Ember Conclave. Um, uh, and many of the weapons have uh, upgrades to Relics as well. But instead of the just straight Relic weapons dropping off Mail Forge, he's going to drop a Heart of Mail Forge, which you will then use on a weapon to convert it to a Relic. Uh, and all the weapons that are convertible have tooltips on that say, if you apply the Flaming Heart of Mail Forge, you get whatever. Um, so... Be, yes, okay, so the Conclave has a hard mode. I can see all you guys saying hard mode. Uh, we don't have any activated hard modes on any other encounter in the zone, but the Conclave does have one. Uh, we want to see how it's received. We want to make sure that it's reasonable. Um, it is something that we'd like to go wide with in the future, activated hard modes in general. Um, but, you know, it's just a time thing, uh, you know, budget thing. Uh, it just takes time to do them and to do them right. So we wanted to try it out here and, uh, and see what people think. Um, as you might expect with a with a council fight, you know, uh, it has three dudes, and the order in which you kill them changes the difficulty of the fight. So if you kill them in the most difficult order, which pro tip is Emberlord to Ritu last, then uh, and then defeat them, then you'll get a bonus loot chest, which uh, drops the item that you need to convert shoulders to relic. And I am told that those relic shoulders are like super best in slot for everybody. Like they're by far the best shoulders in the game. Um, to reflect the difficulty uh, as opposed to, you know, just getting hex drops off of other stuff. Uh, class crystals, yes, the class crystals will work with ID gear. Uh, don't quote me on this. I'm not the itemization guy, but uh, my understanding is that all the gear in the zone is part of the set. I believe that is the case. Um, I can confirm that later, uh, but if not, 
yeah, the crystals that you have already will work with with ID. Um, PTS closed. PTS is not closed. It might be locked right now. Um, Wilkes, uh, we are probably going to run uh, one or two more tests in the next couple of days just before the zone goes live just to, uh, well, actually, you know, today, basically. We're running some tests today. <laughs> Forgot that today's Tuesday. Um, uh, just to kind of like, you know, last minute check some stuff, make sure that, that things are fine. Um, you know, and to confirm Mailforge's, you know, goodness to go live in a couple of weeks. Denizia, how do you activate the hard mode? You kill the council in the most difficult order. That is the hard mode. Uh, Elrar, Intrinsic loves you. I want you to know that. We love you too, Intrinsic. We love you too, Intrinsic. You're our favorite. Um, let's see. Where will the vendor for tokens be and what rep does this raid? Question mark, question mark, question mark. That's not a complete sentence. You get a D minus for that question, sir. But uh, the uh, the vendors will be outside of the uh, the the main zone in in Ember uh, Ember Isle Ember it's Ember Landing right so it's called uh, the Tal oh, Talos Landing there. yeah it's the it's the one you zone into right I just zone in there and run away I can't even remember the scene because I am a bad designer I guess um, so we put in the vendors there they're actually forges that you'll interact with um, and the rep is the uh, the keepers and the other ones for the other faction, you know. <laughs> I play Defiant, so I only know the Keepers. Uh, why did you make her boob so big, LOL? Says Thunderballs. <laughs> um, I didn't make them anyway. Our concept artist concept that way. We were like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then our character artist character arted her in that way. And uh, I think she looks awesome. Don't hate, appreciate. Huge tracks of land. <laughs> <laughs> um, Doctor Doom, for sure, man. Uh, if you're if you've cleared HK, you should be ready for Infernal Dawn. And if you go into Infernal Dawn and get raffle stomped by the first boss for two days straight, then that means that we've probably overtuned it. Honest to God. So, um, you know, it's meant to be just a natural next step from from HK. And I'm hoping that that is what it is. And if it is not that, then we will make it that. Why is there a gating system? Rafter, you know why. <laughs> um, it's basically, uh, it's, it's two things. One, we would like to preserve the feeling of racing and progression for a little bit longer, if possible. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to have a competitive season for raiding for those top end guilds that are, are truly racing each other for world first and everything. Um, and so I think that it's a little more interesting uh, in general uh, to have sort of several mini races as opposed to just one race to kill the last boss. And that will be the one that people care the most about is who kills Maleforge 2 first. Uh, but I think it's going to be more interesting to see, oh, well, this guild, maybe they killed Atuziel first and then fell behind, you know, or, or maybe this guild got counseled down and then kind of like fell apart when it came to the fire ship, like, I, I, you know, or vice versa for that matter. Um, so I'm, I think it's just going to be better in general, uh, you know, as far as com competition goes, um, as well as, uh, sort of managing burnout, I suppose you could say, in guilds. Um, guilds obviously have a tendency to just chain rep, uh, you know, the, the hardcore competitive guilds anyway, have a tendency to chain rep until they win or until people pass out the keyboards or you have to be done. Uh, and so obviously that's your prerogative, but I would prefer, you know, for your health and sanity um, that you get sort of a little breaks during this competitive season so you can stay kind of mentally engaged and keep having fun. Because, like, you know, I'm a hardcore raider too, and I understand that, that sometimes you can be doing something that is genuinely fun, but you do it too many times, your guild leader gets real pissy with you, and it becomes unfun after a certain amount of time, right? It can, anyway. It's a thing. Um, so I kind of want uh, people to, to, I don't know, not take it easy, I guess, uh, but like pace themselves a little bit, you know, like the zone is not easy. It's definitely not like a trivial raffle stomp fest or anything, um, you know, and you're going to have to really put a lot of work into it. Um, and I really think that that everybody who is who is kind of frowning at the idea of gates, you're going to find out pretty soon that it's actually pretty good and healthy and you're going to have more fun. And after a couple of weeks, nobody's going to even remember that they were there. I'm guessing. I don't know. Maybe now that I said that, it will obviously be super false. But um, exactly, yeah, that's going to be like a soundboard or whatever. 
Um, new Synergy Crystals. No, we're going to keep the Synergy Crystals that are in. Uh, we felt like they work pretty well. They're pretty balanced now, uh, more or less, you know. Um, make Josh improve the trinkets. Okay, I will do that right now. I'm going to put down my microphone and go make Josh improve the trinkets specifically for you. Um, let's see, what else? Is there anything that's not class related? Somebody says jump, jump, jump. <laughs> Um, anything else? Will there be platforming concepts? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so I can talk about that a little bit. Uh, you saw in the video the jumping across platforms in the Mailforge fight. Um, that's essentially a new piece of tech that we've got that allows you to, like, jump these long distances, uh, you know, by defining sort of landing zones and stuff. And it, it's pretty cool, I think. Um, you won't have to aim yourself too much. You just kind of have to, like, point yourself to, towards the platform that you want to jump towards and then jump and it will automatically jump you to the whatever platform you're facing. It's it's works pretty well. I'm very happy with how it's turned out. Um, but yeah, so that part of the fight, you're having to split your rate up, uh, traverse the platforms carefully, defeat all of the uh, uh, all the defense systems in there. I guess they're they're like summon turrets, uh, and there's like phoenixes and, and things like that that you're gonna have to fight through uh, to in, or, in order to access the dragon eggs, which is really your goal. You want to destroy the dragon eggs at that point. Um, and meanwhile, like Mailforge is flying around, you're getting harassed by stuff, your raid is split into pieces. So it should be pretty exciting, I hope. Uh, Pajak. Yes. Uh, so in order to make the relic weapon, you will need to kill Mailforge. However, for instance, Lathis drops a weapon that you can change into a relic with the Mailforge drop. We're hoping that this system gives a lot more flexibility, a lot more choice, you know, a little bit less. Cool, we didn't get a Kraken Spine again this week. We got the Cleric Tanking Wand, you know, which is, uh, you know, no offense to all the Justicars out there, but people want the Kraken Spine, right? And this system will allow them to convert, you know, an existing pole arm into the Kraken Spine equivalent for this zone. In this case, it is, uh, I want to say, the uh, Burning Revelation. It's the super awesome scythe that you may have seen. Um, that's, the, that's the relic pole arm for the zone. What's the lore about the eggs? Well, um, when a dragon and another dragon love each other very much, uh, sometimes they'll, uh, you know, close the door to the Golden Horde, you know, they'll put on some soft death metal music, because that's what Male Forge likes. Uh, you know, um, he'll have his minions bring in a pallet of, uh, you know, the Talara's most expensive Iron Pine Melange, you know, an ancient and rare vintage, kind of get her in the mood a little, you know. Um, and then... You know, what do you think happens? They make some babies up in this piece. That's what happens. Ugh, making the babies. Does that answer your question? Seriously. Yeah? I can elaborate if you guys want, you know? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, ask your dad or your mom for more details on how dragons make the babies, all right? I just set the stage here, but the, uh, you know, there's more going on there that you're going to need to ask your mommy and daddy about. <laughs> um, I am sorry for the Frenchman who doesn't understand my English. I apologize. I will try to learn French for the next one, um, and then I'll do it in French, and all the English people will complain that they can't understand me. And all the French people won't be able to understand me either. It's not like I'm, yeah. That's cool. Increase the size of tank shields. Uh, there's actually some really pimping shields in the zone that are bigger and meatier and cooler. Uh, so I think you will not be disappointed, Tearlith. Um, Aftermath Matu. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come join your aid, man. That's cool. Um, I, I come equipped with a uh, uh, damage 10% button um, that, as you might expect, does 10% of a mob's health per button press. Also, it's off the GCD. So... Um, if you guarantee me all the loots that I want, I will come and blow up all your mobs. And that's totally the truth. I'm not joking at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Anyhow, on that note, folks, it is now the magical hour of 12 noon here on the Pacific Coast. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for spending their uh, half hour with us. It has been a, uh, a wonderful time. I hope you've gotten... A lot of information uh, and are looking forward to the release of infernal dawn as much as we are as a reminder that is tomorrow wednesday april 18th that'll be early morning thursday april 19th most likely for europe 
And uh, I'll also say hi to Apocalypse, since someone was asking me to say that a million times. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Again, one more time from all of us to try on. Have a wonderful afternoon. And me.